so desperate for faithful friends. So weighted down with bad decisions. Then I heard a still small voice that was breaking through the noise. He asked me if I wanted freedom. He told me of his love and grace. I could taste forgiveness And when I fell down on my knees In the hour I first believed God was the guilt and shame God, he took all the blame God, all my past regrets I fell in and I see I forget the less of their God, all the chains of sin God, all the fear within God, heaven's mind and claim And the worst and best I've not ever left alone You were always right beside me And hear me every time I pray Since I first began You've been my dearest friend And I give you all my praise I just want to say Thanks this moment and I will continually for each day I live your way. Good morning.
Good morning. morning. Welcome to Greater Life Baptist Church. Good to see you this morning. I'm glad you're here. And uh, we celebrate the Lord's Day, amen, and uh, His many blessings on us, and also uh, our BBS commencement. And uh, I want to take a minute to tell all of you parents and grandparents and friends that's here with us today, thank you for allowing your children to be with us uh, this past week. And uh, <clears throat> what a tremendous blessing it was. Every night we had a great time, and man, they can get loud. They can get loud. And, uh, but we had, we had a great time, and uh, thank you for giving forgiven uh, we had a competition going on between the girls and the boys and the girls rocked it out i mean the girls rocked it out big time big time i mean makes me even ashamed to stand here and uh, for the first time in my life to be associated uh with the male sex okay listen check this out uh, the total for the week, the total for the week, and every dime that come in, Greater Life is in the, uh, in the beginning processes of opening up a, a Christian academy. We already have a great preschool, a great summer camp, and uh, we're going to open up a Christian academy, and we need a new building and things like that, and all that that goes with it uh, on, the, uh, on that side. So everything that come in this week is going to go towards putting a brand new building out here where uh, we can have classrooms and a place for the kids to play and uh, open it up to the community and just do great things for the Lord Jesus Christ. And the total for the week was $1,870.06. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand for that. And uh, the girls, the girls brought in $1,273.16. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And them boys, them boys, and, and, and maybe it's because that whoever the loser is between me as being the representative of the male side and my darling wife on the piano being the representative on the female side and, uh, and the, the winner does not get a pie in the face or get bombed with water balloons. And uh, I said, I guess they all gained up on me. Now, all week long, I was in a sling. I just had uh, uh, surgery on my shoulder. And I thought they would have mercy on a crippled man. <laughs> but they didn't. The boys only brought in $596.90. Amen. Give them young men a hand. Amen. And we tried. We tried. We tried. Even the preacher was putting money in, but it just wasn't enough. Friday night. Man, they just, they, it, money come in from everywhere into the girl's bucket. Amen. But the good news on top of all of that is uh, we had well over every night but Friday. Friday night was down a little bit. We had way over 100 kids every night. Yeah. And this is how we do around Greater Life. We believe it's very important that people know Jesus Christ as their Savior. But we just don't lead somebody down through a prayer and just get a profession of faith. But anytime there's curiosity in a child and they want to know more, we pull them and uh, we take the Bible and we sit down and we talk to them to make sure they have a full understanding, number one, of who Jesus is, what sin is, are they a sinner, what did Jesus do for that, so make sure they have an understanding of the gospel, of the gospel and what salvation really is. And this week, thanks be unto God, we had 12 young people with an understanding of the scriptures that gave their heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, amen. Man, what a blessing. What a blessing that was to be able to be a part uh, of doing that and, and leading some of them to the Lord. And, and, uh, and Preacher Josh is going to lead us in music in a few minutes. He helped me this week, leading some of them to the Lord. And man, I tell you what, kids are brutally honest. Brutally honest. I asked this question one time. John, he said, you know what sin is? He said, yeah. What is it? When I punch somebody in the face. <laughs> Amen. 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 I, you know, I guess that's the only time. If he, never, if he don't punch nobody, I guess he'll be all right. But kids, kids, man, their mind, their minds is so, uh, so, uh, so pure in a sense that they'll believe whatever. That's why it's important, and I say thank you from the bottom of my heart for allowing us to be able to invest in them the Word of God. Amen. And uh, we don't take that responsibility lightly. We do not at all. So thank you, parents. And so we're going to worship here in a few minutes, and then the kids are going to come in. And uh, we had to remove some decorations. Uh, we did have all this decorated. And they're going to come in and, and show you some things that they learned and sing to you here in a little while. And then when we're done, we're all going to go outside. There's pizza for everybody. We'll have uh, pizza out there in the field. Games are set up. They can visit and uh, get uh, prizes for the children out there. And then I'm going to change right after church. And then y'all can all watch them have a heyday throwing all that stuff at me. Amen. And uh, yeah, yeah. 
Y'all let me know who it was behind me to just clap the loudest. Amen. Amen. You notice that some of the church members is getting loud behind me. Amen. Amen. Listen, uh, something else I was going to mention, it just slipped my mind. Pizza and pie and all that. A couple other announcements, and we're going to get right into the worship. Uh, if you was here last week, we talked about Arise 22, where we take our young people from the ages of 12 to 25 uh, to Arise Youth Conference up in Pigeon Forge, Tennessee, with a whole week pack of dynamic preaching and singing and Dollywood and all kind of things like that. And uh, we began a sponsorship last week, uh, you know, $50 a month for 10 months. And uh, we had many sign up. If you're still interested in doing that, the signature board will be in the back after service. And uh, you can please get on that and get involved with that. Uh, also, this is for uh, uh, this is not for you visitors. This is not for you. It's for our church because I don't want you having to help with this. Is after we get done with all of our festivities uh, in the field, we will be having cleanup and all that. And uh, we want you visitors just to have a good time, play as long as you want to. When you get tired and hot, uh, you ain't got to help do a thing. Uh, just uh, tell us you'll be back sometimes, and you'll bring your kids back for Awanas, you know, and Wacky Wednesdays, and, uh, and that'll be a good day. And, uh, but for our volunteers, and uh, can we take a minute and give all these people that's in red all around the church, they're the ones that volunteered. Can we give them a hand for their hard work and effort this week? <laughs> Amen. I promise you, Friday night when they left, there was a lot of them dragging dragging but uh they did they did a tremendous job we thank you for that but uh but volunteers will be staying and we'll be doing our cleanup and then we got a brief meeting with everybody here in the sanctuary at three o'clock there will be no evening service tonight no evening service tonight uh because we're gonna have a long day here you worked hard all week so we're gonna take care of business and then we're gonna go home and rest this evening say amen amen, amen. i know you're looking forward to that this is what i was going to mention if you've ever been saved, this is to you parents also, if your child was one of them that, uh, that asked the Lord to save them, we believe the Bible teaches us to follow the Lord in, uh, in baptism. The first Sunday in September, the first Sunday in September, we will be having a baptism here at the church, and your child is welcome. It don't matter if you're a member here or come here, it don't make no difference to us. Uh, if your child uh, accepted Christ uh, here during Vacation Bible School, if you're a church member, you've never been baptized, then I invite you to be baptized that Sunday. If you're a parent... Would you please let Miss Kristen know, Miss Kristen, our great children's administrator, let her know you would like for your child to be baptized. And then if you're a church member or attend here, you let me know, and we'll get all that lined up. Amen? Amen. Who's ready to worship? Yes. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. Uh, we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Brother Josh is going to come and lead us in the old hymnal, I'll Fly Away. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, God, Lord, for how good you are to us, for allowing us to be back uh, in your sanctuary this morning. Thank you, Lord, for a good week of Vacation Bible School. Thank you, Lord, for all of our guests, our family, and our friends that's with us today. I pray, God, you speak to every heart, bless every individual, and that we will all leave here today saying it's been good to be in the Lord's house. In Jesus' name, amen. Y'all remain standing as we sing. Let's sing together, I'll Fly Away. Well, some glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shores. I'll fly away. Let's sing, church. Oh, I. Prison bars is flown. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah. By and by, I'll fly away. On the last, well, just a few more weary days and then. shall never end. I'll fly away. Oh, I'll fly away. Oh, glory. I'll fly away in the morning when I die. Hallelujah. By and by, I'll fly away. So 
somebody give the Lord some praise this morning. Amen. 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 You remain standing. We're fixing to worship the Lord by giving of our tithe and our offering. And the way we do it around Greater Life, we'll sing another hymnal. I'm going to pray. And uh, folks come and they give to the Lord as the Lord has blessed them. Would you pray with me this morning? Father, again, we come to you. We want to tell you another time, God, we love you. And God, we are grateful for your mercy and your grace upon us, God. And God, we can never, ever put a price tag on the blood that was shed on Calvary for the redemption of our souls, God. So today, as we worship you in spirit and truth, and we give back that a part, Lord, just a part of what you bless us with, I pray, God, Lord, you receive it with gladness, and you would bless the gift and the giver. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Let's sing one more together. He set me free. Once like a bird in prison I dwell No freedom from my sorrow I fell But Jesus came and listened to me And glory to God He set me free Well, He set me free Yes, He set me free And He broke the bonds of prison for me I'm glory bound by Jesus to see for glory to God. He set me free on the second. Now I am climbing higher each day. Darkness of night has drifted away. My feet are planted on higher ground and glory to God. I'm homeward bound. Well, he set me free. Yes, he set me free. And he broke the bonds of prison for me. I'm glorified by Jesus to see for glory to God. He set me free. On the last goodbye to sin and things that confound not of the world shall turn me around daily i'm working i'm praying to and glory to god i'm going through well he set me free yes he set me free and he broke the bonds of prison for me i'm glory to see for glory to God he set me free somebody give the Lord some praise amen you can be seated thank you for standing That pours from Emmanuel's veins The sinner was plunged beneath the flood God saves Since then I walk in forgiveness All of my guilt was erased The change of the past are broken at last I got saved oh I got saved I'm undone by the mercy of Jesus I'm undone by the goodness of the Lord I'm restored and made right He got a hold on my life I got Jesus I could I want more The love of God. 
in and all. He knows how much sand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. He made the mountains and the seas. He's in control of everything, of all creatures great and small. He knows my name, every step that I take. to the questions of life, but I know in whom I have believed. He knows my name, every step that I take. And said I've won God has lost his only son The brightest star no longer shines Finally this world is mine Then he gathered all his demons near he said, we have conquered love with fear. Meanwhile, back at the cross, all is not lost. Forgiveness is bought with each drop of his blood that falls to the ground. Mercy abounds, his mother may To see your precious son pay the cost. The devil said, we'll use their pride. 
We'll attack them from inside. We'll fill their hearts with vanity. Till their differences are all they'll see. Black and white, rich and poor, to justify their holy war. around turn on the evening news the devil says there's no way that I'm gonna lose hate is everywhere love cannot be found it took me 2,000 years but it's almost over now At the cross. Yes, thank the Lord for the cross of Calvary. Amen. Amen. If it wasn't for the cross, we'd have no hope this morning. Amen. If it wasn't for what the Lord Jesus Christ did for us, where would we be at? A lot of us would be in jail. Some of us would be in hell. But thanks be unto God, we could sit in a church house where we still got liberty and freedom to be able to worship the Lord Jesus Christ and be thankful for the cross of Calvary. Amen. While the choir's coming down, I want you to be grabbing your Bibles this morning. And we're going to go to a verse that we've been hearing all week long. All week long, this verse is being rang down across this sanctuary. Uh, the children have been learning it, memorizing it, hollering it, screaming it. And, uh, and I've been saying it and memorizing it and praying on it and everything else. And I think it just be what the Lord would have for us to speak on this morning. If you take your Bibles and go to first, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians 9.15. 2 Corinthians 9.15. Second Corinthians 9.15, the Bible says, Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gifts. Unspeakable gifts. I want to preach to you this morning for a few minutes on the unspeakable gifts. Let's pray. Father, we love you. And again, we come to you, Lord, asking you, God, Lord, for liberty to preach the Word of God. Lord, we don't take this little bit of time that these folks have given to us, God, Lord, to sit here and listen to what's proclaimed from the Word of God. So I pray, God, you hide me behind the cross. Make preaching easy. Guard my lips. Let nothing come forth, Lord. But that would be edifying to the Son of God a help to the needs of those that's before us, God. And your will be done in the sanctuary. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Hey, who likes gifts? Or oh, let me rephrase that. Is there anybody that don't like gifts? Don't like gifts. I mean, uh, how many likes it when it's your birthday? I ain't talking to the older crowd. I'm talking to the younger crowd. How many like we got them birthday gifts? How about Christmas time? How many of you women love it when it's coming anniversary time and you know your man is just going to do something special for you? Y'all men's in trouble. If your man don't do nothing special for you, reach over there and give him a Holy Ghost slap in the back of the head. Amen. And say, get it together. Amen. I actually seen some of them slapping. Amen. Amen. I apologize, that, sir. I didn't think there would be none. Amen. We'll be praying for you. Listen. Listen, how about them gifts, though? 
I mean, we expect a birthday gift, right? You expect a gift at Christmas time. I mean, you, I mean, these ladies just made it very obvious they expect an anniversary gift. Amen. And those of you that ain't married yet, those guys, you better just take notice and, 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 and write, write that down and remember how to keep yourself out of trouble. Learn what not to do. But how about those gifts that come along in life that, you know what, that's unexpected? I mean, you, you ever just had somebody just walk up to you and just give you something out of nowhere? And, man, it's just like, wow, I didn't see that one coming. I don't know where that would come from. I mean, how many of us could just take a minute and look back over our life and see that there was places, or, or not necessarily places, but there was people that God put in your life that you're sitting on this side now and looking back and saying, man, that was a gift from heaven right there. I appreciate God bringing that individual into my life. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, we got some family and friends here today that, you know, I was thinking about it. Uh, a young man by the name of Jackson. I got the name right. Jackson, I think what y'all call him. He come to vacation. Bible school this week. I had no idea who this dude was. I mean, I had no idea who he was. And I think it was on Thursday night, somewhere along in there, uh, Josh right here, he led that boy to the Lord. And you know, and I do like y'all do, you know, uh, uh, when I get home and, and, and I want to relax this, you know, I start scrolling on social media. You know how y'all do. You know, you just start scrolling. When I started scrolling and I seen his mom put something on Facebook about how her son had got saved and, and you know, and I seen his picture, I thought, man, that dude looks familiar. And then she hashtagged, great her life and I thought under God I didn't realize who that little boy was who that little boy was and I uh, messaged I said make sure he talks to me sees me to a uh, Friday night and I talked to the young man you say what does this got anything to do with gifts because his great granddaddy was a great gift in my life a lot of y'all remember a man by the name of Sam Weinkoff y'all remember Sam Weinkoff and, and Miss Shirley well Sam Weinkoff was a man that very was very instrumental in my younger years of my life that brings me to where I'm standing at right now with the boldness and courage to open up the word of God and his great grand boy got saved right here at the same place amen where he used to attend teach Sunday school and a man that loved God and I thought about that I thought man Sam was a gift in my life he was man I cherished those times I mean all he did was love on me that's all he did that's all he did was love on me. I mean, we got, we got a young man in our church who's going to start working with our teens here in the near future. And I said, man, just love on them. I said, something. I gave him this illustration talking about Sam, not even realized what was going on vacation Bible school. I said, this man would do something like this. On Saturday morning, when we lived in Indian land, he'd come by the house. On the way to the trash dump. Trash dump. Some of y'all Indian landers, old timers, I ain't talking about you newcomers. <laughs> old Indian land. Y'all remember when the trash dump down on Jim Wilson down at the bottom of the hill, the old trash dump. Amen. When Indian land was Indian land, can I get an amen? amen. Yeah, amen, amen. And anyway, he'd come by and he'd pick me up to go to the trash dump. Some people say, he just wanted you to throw off the garbage. No, we stopped by Mr. B's. How many of y'all remember Mr. B's? Amen. Thank God for old man Mr. B. Amen. Amen. Buy me a little old Mountain Dew in the little glass bottle. Y'all remember them? And a pack of Lance cheese crackers. We'd get in the truck, drive down there, drop trash off, take the long way around Henry Harris. He'd drop me back off at the house. You say, but that don't sound like a whole lot. You're right. It don't sound like a whole lot. But what he was doing, he was gifting me with something that here many, many years later, I look back and I cherish that time and that gift that I could just be honest with you. I cannot put it into words what that man did for me in my heart and my life it was an unspeakable gift an unspeakable gift listen this verse is speaking of a gift that really there are just no words to explain it all it just leaves you speechless I'll be honest with you I look at Sam and I can look at other people and name I can stay here and tell you stories all day long of people that's put in there and I have to stop and just scratch my head and say, man, why did they love on me? What was special about a, about a little, a little reddish-brown-headed rebel, rebellion, hellion young man that thought he had the world by the tail, that mama couldn't tell him nothing, the preacher couldn't preach him nothing, you know, and he rebelled against everything. Why would he spend any time with somebody like me? It ended up with just, you know, I mean, I, I can't come up with no words. It's an unspeakable gift. But I have to zero in and just talk about, you know what, it had to be somewhere along the lines because he loved us. He loved us. And the Bible says here in, uh, in Corinthians, thanks be unto God. 
thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. Which Paul is telling us that God, God in heaven, who we've never laid our eyes on. God in heaven, who we've never audibly heard his voice audibly with our ears. But somewhere beyond the balloon, there is the great I am. The Alpha and Omega. The one that spoke the world into existence. The one that took the dirt up off the ground and formed man into his own image breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul said there's a group of people down there you know what I know they're rebellious I know that they're wicked I know they do some things that you know what that just ain't right can we just stop a minute and let's just all take off our spiritual halos and just admit we all got skeletons and things in our life that we are not proud of and if we could go back we'd redo some things can I get a hearty amen right there I yes amen but you know what but God still says you know what I'm not doing this because of how good they are I'm not doing this because of how well behaved they are I'm not doing this just to get anything out of them but I'm doing this simply because I love them I love them and this morning I want to give you three of these unspeakable gifts that when we talk about them it just has to hinge that God gave it to us and it's just undescribable the first one this morning is the unspeakable gift of his son of his son I mean how can we really describe and talk about the son of God I mean the Bible says in John 3 16 for God so loved the world that he gave he gave gifted his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life it's an unspeakable gift when you begin to talk about Jesus Jesus Christ when they sung about that song he knows my name do you know that the Lamb of God knows who you are listen Donald Trump didn't know me and I'm glad Joe Biden don't know me and there's a lot of people that don't know me and my name made in neon lights and I don't have 40,000 campuses across this world and everybody don't come to hear what I got to say but I'm glad I got a direct line to the throne room of God and there's a man by the name of Jesus that loved me because because he's an unspeakable gift. First John 14 says, Here is love. Not that we love God. You know, that's the way the world's love operates. They'll love you as long as you've got something for them. But as soon as you cut it off, they cut you off. Right? Right? Listen to what the Bible says. Here is love. Not, not that we love God, but that He loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins think about this you parents in here uh, the uh, the ones from vacation bible school our regular parents and all the above you brought your children to greater life to trust us for two hours but you came back to get your prized possession you trusted us for two hours. That was going to be about the max of it. Now, I know some of y'all in here said, no, I would have left them all night long if you would have let me. <laughs> but just run with me. Just stay with me for my illustration. But there's a man by the name of God that gave his son, not just for a two-hour Bible study, not just for 33 and a half years, not just for a three and a half year ministry on planet earth, but he gave his son that he may make a trip all the way to a thing that we call the cross that stretched himself out over Calvary's hill and gave his life because he was a gift to you. Why? Because the only way that we can have life, the only way that we can really be alive down in here, I ain't talking about up in here I'm talking about down deep in our soul is you know what the Bible says we was born dead in trespasses and sin but I'm glad that wasn't the end of the story the Bible says in John 10 but the thief cometh but for to steal kill and destroy but I've come to give life and to give it more abundantly I'm glad there's an unspeakable gift of the son of God who God gave him to you simply because he loved you Romans 8 32 says he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us here's a very very important word all that word don't seem to hold a whole lot of water but technically that's a powerful word a powerful word 
He that spared not his own son. God loves you so much that he says, I ain't even going to spare my own son. Now, I'm speaking from a father's point of view. I got four precious kids. I got two grown boys. I got an 18-year-old, grand, uh, 18-year-old daughter. I started to say granddaughter. 18-year-old daughter. Matter of fact, I even got a four-year-old daughter. You ought to give me a hand right there. <laughs> but I'm going to go on and tell you, I like you. Most of you. I love you. But if your life depended on my firstborn son, my secondborn son, my daughter, my other daughter, you'd be up the creek without a paddle. Matter of fact, you wouldn't even have no canoe. You'd be in trouble. But God said, He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us, check this out, all things, all things. What are you saying, preacher? What I'm saying, that unspeakable gift of his son, if God Almighty said, I ain't even going to spare my own boy because I love them so much, how much more do you think that he loves us? How much more do you think that he's given to us? He just ain't giving me his son. Oh, he's giving me a reason to live. He's put something down in my soul that no matter how rough life gets, no matter how low life gets, no matter how dark, depressed, discouraged, life is, there's a man by the name of Jesus down on the inside that never leaves me nor forsakes me picks me up, brushes me off and says I still love you I'm talking about an unspeakable gift of his son number two, how about the unspeakable gift of salvation salvation, I hate to bust some of y'all's bubbles in here but you need salvation you can't help yourself I challenge any one of you, control those evil thoughts that bombard your mind. You can't do it. You can't do it. I, I, I double dog dare you. I know those of you that are sitting in here and you got some kind of addiction. You know what addiction is? A controller. Oh, I can lay it down anytime I want to. Yeah, I used to say that too. I can give it up whenever I want to. I used to say that too. The only find out I was going right back to it the next day. Going right back to it the next night. Right back to it. Right back to it. Let's just be honest. How many of us is walking around fooling ourselves, thinking that tomorrow is going to be better? Thinking that, you know what, if I could just make it to vacation time, it'll be better. If I could just make it to the next stimulus check, God bless America, I'll be just a little bit better. Oh, if I could, and you know, and we're convincing ourselves that, you know what, if I do this, the marriage is going to get better. If I do this, the children is going to be better. If I do this, the career is going to be better. When we're going to wake up and realize we're just a bunch of sinners and we cannot help ourselves. And can I plug this in here? You're all sinners, but it's not your fault that you was born the way you was born. It's not your fault you was born dead and trespasses to sin. That all started way back at the garden. It was Adam's fault. But because of Adam's fall, here we are in the condition that we're in. We have to work by the sweat of a brow. We have ladies, you have to labor. Hey, in you, and you're laboring to bring children into the world. All of that is because of sin. We have to walk to a place we call a cemetery and say and lay our loved ones hey, in a grave all because of sin. All the sin of this world causes all of the bad and the chaotic things of this world. Depression because of sin. Discouragement because of sin. Divorce because of sin. Suicide because of sin. It's sin, it's sin, it's sin. And you know what? And honestly, if we stay in that condition, there is no hope. But I come to tell you, there's an unspeakable gift of salvation that brings hope to every living, breathing soul. Thank God for the unspeakable gift of salvation. His Son brought salvation. The Bible says something like this in Ephesians 2, 8. For by grace. I'll be the first one to tell you, I don't even deserve your 30-minute attention to sit there and even hear what I got to say. Matter of fact, if I was to remove and you was to see the skeletons, and you knew me for who I really was, you'd pay me no attention. Some of y'all in here, you know me from when I was here. Some of y'all know me from when I was here to here to here. Some of y'all know my past, you know my life, and everything else. And I ain't nothing, you know, I'm what, an alcoholic? I was a drunk. 
drug addict, strung out, no hope, no reason to live. I was one of the original redneck, Indian land, pothead, beer drinking, hell raising individuals. There ain't nobody raked 521 like we've done it. Say amen right there. Some of y'all been right there with me. But you know what? There came a time in my life of them unspeakable gifts where he played a man like Sam Weinkoff. He played a man of God in my life. He put a mama in my life. Hey, you know what? But there came a day, October the 1st, 1995, he brought an unspeakable gift of his son. And when his son came walking in, he brought an unspeakable gift of salvation. For by grace are you saved. Shake this out. Shake this out. He said, are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves. I know, I know. I'm looking pretty good this morning. Amen. I got a suit. First time I wore a suit in six weeks. I was able to tie a brand new tie this morning. I don't care what you think. Amen. I told him this morning, I've been looking good since the day I come out of the womb. Amen, amen, amen. And I'll be looking good to the dog Lord takes me out of this place. Amen, amen. And you think the same thing about yourself, so don't look at me that way. But you know what? Listen, but I'll be the first one to tell you that if my salvation, if my salvation, if my hope, if, if my joy, if my home in heaven depended on this individual you're looking at, I'm a coming up short. I'm a coming up short. But the Bible says, for by grace are you saved through faith that not of yourselves it is look at this the gift of God I'm saved born again on my way to heaven not because I'm a Baptist not because I'm a preacher not because I go to church but because there's an unspeakable gift by the name of Jesus Christ that brought salvation to this world listen listen number three y'all make your way back up and get ready for some music the unspeakable gift of security security what does that mean i mean nothing is stable in this world our government ain't stable let me say it again our government ain't stable our country is not stable our economy is not stable this world is not stable the, our jobs ain't stable i mean we can't even guarantee there's going to be milk on the on the shelves tomorrow there may have i mean whenever you start getting shortage of chicken wings in america you in bad bad shape the heck with toilet paper there's leaves on the tree but when you can't get a chicken wing you got yourself in trouble my friend not many things are secure in this world but if god said it to you gave it to you you can rest assured you're secured. A lot of folks don't have no confidence in church no more in America because they put their confidence in a man that stood behind the pulpit. A lot of people don't want nothing to do with church because of the way they got treated in, at church. And I'll be the first one to tell you, though I want all of I wish all of you attended Greater Life Baptist Church. I'd love to watch you spiritually grow. But I'm just going to be honest with you, you'll find the most meanest people in the world that attend the places that's called churches. And people get hurt in church. Hurt bad. And it causes them to begin to forget about the unspeakable gift that God has given them. The unspeakable gift of his son. The unspeakable gift of salvation. And the unspeakable gift of security. What do you mean? That listen, the Bible says, don't you ever put no confidence in the arm of flesh. Flesh of failure. I mean, let's just be honest. I fail myself. Have you? Have you ever did something and you felt bad? Man, what, what was I thinking? What did I do? We can't even trust ourselves with making the right decisions every time. Anybody ever made a wrong decision? You can't trust yourself. Does that make sense? And there's just not a lot of things that secure in life. But listen, 1 John 5, 11 says, And this is the record that God has given, uh, given to us eternal life. And this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. Now there's some of you in here, you don't look too happy. 
There's some of you in here, you, 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 you don't have a lot of joy. There's some of you, your, your whole life is all consisted on the circumstances that surround you, and you're like a weed in a, in a whirlwind, and you're tossed to and fro, and there's no stability, there's no security in your life. And I come to tell you, there's an unspeakable gift that can be found in Jesus Christ that will bring salvation to your soul. And when that man Jesus brings salvation to your soul, let the winds blow, let the waters rock the boat, let all Oh, hell of hell. Let the economy crash. I ain't worried about the chicken wing. I ain't worried about the milk. I ain't worried about the price of diesel. No, they're raping us. But one thing I do know, that there is a Father above that I have security in, that God's grace is sufficient, and He will take care of me. And He'll take care of you. Listen. Listen. Romans 6, 23. Oh, man. If you only read this verse, it sounds so horrible. For the wages of sin is death. Have we all sinned? You're going to die. For the wages. Oh, preacher, I've been doing pretty good. Look, there's, there's, a, whole, there's a whole room of uh, uh, ground of people out there. They didn't die because of heart attack. They didn't die because of high cholesterol or cancer and all the things that they label it. They died because of sin. For the wages of sin is death. And if that's where I left off at, we'd all walk out of here worrying about when it come our time to die. But that's not the rest of the verse. The rest of the verse says, But the gift, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. There's a gift. Yes, the wages of sin is dead. Yes, Sam Weinkoff, he died when that horrible hurricane, uh, Storm Hugo, came through here many, many years ago. He was out working his fingers to the bone, worrying about, you know, getting lights back on. And you know what? Taking time away from his family, putting his place in harm's way. And he didn't know that that day on top of that pole, when he took his hat off and wiped away the sweat from his brow because of sin, and Adam's fall, and he laid his head back, and that wire was still alive, and he slipped out into eternity. They can testify that was a horrible day. There's still an emptiness in a void and we're not making light of it and you never get over it. And time does not heal that kind of stuff. But on the other side, on the other side of the coin, I happen to know that there's a man by the name of Sam that told me about an unspeakable gift by the name of Jesus Christ. He told me about an unspeakable gift about a thing called salvation. And he said there's an unspeakable gift of a thing called security. You can rest the soul my friend that when it comes my time to die everything's going to be alright because when Sam slipped off of that pole when it's a few miles down the road he stepped over to the other side and he seen for the first time in his life a man by the name of Jesus everything was alright and let me tell you that gift just ain't for Sam it just ain't for the preacher it's for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Listen, I'll put it to you as simple as I know how. Do you know what sin is? It's anything that we think, say, or do that goes against God's Word. Now, are you a sinner? You know who Jesus is? He ain't just a figment of our imagination. He ain't just a man recorded in history books. He's a man sent by God Almighty, the only, the one and only authentic Son of God. There is no other, will be no other. He is the only one. There ain't no way, uh, many ways to heaven. There's only one way to heaven. Jesus, an unspeakable gift, is given to you. And he died on a cross. Now let me ask you something, dads, moms, grandmas, grandpas, aunts, uncles. When you gift them nephews and nieces and children and grandchildren with a gift and it's wrapped up, how would it make you feel if they just took the gift, understood where it came from, knows who gave it to them, and then just sit it down and walked off with no interest in the gift? A gift is no good unless it's received. 
unless it's received. Received. And right now, I'm telling you, I don't know who you are. I don't know all your walks of life. I don't need to know where you came from. All I come to do is one thing, one mission, is to make sure that everybody has the opportunity to know that they have received the unspeakable gifts that God sent His Son, salvation, and walk out these doors and be able to look at the sky. You've never seen such a pretty Carolina blue sky. Then when you look at it knowing, I'm secure in the arms of God. How do we receive this gift? Well, you know who Jesus is? Do you believe he died on the cross for your sins? Your sins. You believe that? Does anybody believe that? Your sins. The Bible says this is how you receive the gift. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let me give you redneck interpretation. Whoever calls on Jesus gets the gift. Now, if I was giving a raffle away and I was giving away a $1,000 check, and I said, I got a ticket, and the only way you can win this is you got to have your ticket, and I'm going to draw it a little bit. Is there anybody that does not want an opportunity for free chats of $1,000? You have to be mentally insane, and we would call 911 if you said, I don't want it. Everybody would want in on the opportunity. Today, I didn't come to offer you $1,000. I come to offer you security, salvation, a son with a promise of hope, love, a friend. I come to offer you a friend, a friend that's sticking closer than a brother. And before I close, and we have our children come in, I've sat where some of you are sitting right now, and I've heard the same thing that you've heard this morning before. And I had the same thoughts that you've had. But what about this? I got to give this up. I got to do this. I wonder if all that stuff is true. I've sat there and I've had those same questions. I wonder if God would do for me like He's done for others. Oh, I've, I've, I've thought it all. And now, 25 years later, I can testify to the same thing that Sam Weinkoff testified to me as a young man in the Sunday school building rooms down there, going to Jim Wilson's trash dump, walking into Mr. B's. God is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And I have found that every word, every promise is true. And He's faithful. He's just. He's holy. And He knows you're unholy. But because of that unspeakable gift, He can receive you and make you holy. Have you did ever in your life have you done like those 12 precious young people did this week when they looked up to the eyes of this preacher and to the eyes of this preacher and said, yes, I want Jesus in my life. I promise you that'll be the best thing that's ever happened to you. The worst day of my life became the best day of my life. The day I realized I was a sinner, lost without God, and if I died at that moment without Him, there is a place of eternity, a place called hell beneath our feet. Whether we believe it or not makes no difference. Makes no difference. It still exists. And it's hot. And it was not created for you. It was created for the devil and his angels. And you don't go to hell because... You don't go to church. You don't go to hell because you take a drink. You don't go to hell because you're a drug addict. There ain't but one thing that sends anybody to a place of eternity in hell. And that is rejecting the unspeakable gift of the Son. Salvation. And the eternal life, security that God is offering. You go to hell because of unbelief. But the good news is this. There's a place called heaven. Oh, there's a place called heaven. And I could not even put it into words to describe that place called heaven. But I ain't really concerned about the walls of Jasper 
in the gates of pearl and the streets of gold. But in that place called heaven, there's a throne room. There's a man by the name of God at the right hand of him. It's the unspeakable gift, the Son. You don't go to heaven because you're a tither. You don't go to heaven because you're a churchgoer. You don't go to heaven because you're a Baptist preacher. You're a missionary. You're a good moral person. You don't go to heaven because you bring your children to vacation Bible school. You get them in children's church. You got, you got, no, you don't go to heaven because of that. You go to heaven for one reason, one reason only. One way, one way only. The acceptance of that man that died on the cross of Calvary for your sins. Would you do me a favor this morning? Our children are making their way up. They're fixing to come in here and bless our souls. But would you do me a favor? Would, would you bow your head with me this morning? Everybody, please, not make it ready to leave. We ain't got but a few minutes left. Would you bow your head, close your eyes? I want you to look inwardly, everybody. Everybody, look inwardly and ask yourself this question. Have I ever received the unspeakable gift of the Son? Have I ever been born again, saved? Have I ever asked God for forgiveness? Ask yourself this question. If I took my last breath right here on this church chair, do I know for sure that I'm going to heaven to meet that unspeakable gift, Jesus Christ? If you're here today and you can say, yes, preacher, I know. I know that I know that when it comes my time, I have received the unspeakable gift of the Son, the salvation, secure, I'm secure in the arms of God. And I'm lifting my hand up, preacher, to testify between you and God that I know I have received the unspeakable gifts. If you know for sure, would you raise your hand? Keep it up high. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking. You know for sure. I got it. Heaven's my home. All right. Thank you for being honest. Hands up all over the sanctuary of people that know. Man, I got it, preacher. I got it. Listen, but there was also many hands that did not go up. Did not go up. This unspeakable gives. When you receive it, what more would you ever ask for? Everything you've been searching for is found in these unspeakable gives. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. I will not embarrass you this morning. I'm not even going to ask you to get up and come to an altar. This is what I'm going to ask you before we close and the children come in. If you're here today and you know in your heart, preacher, I've never received that unspeakable gift. I don't want you to come to me. I don't want you to embarrass me. I just want you to pray for me. I'm going to lift my hand, preacher. Nobody's looking but you and God. Now I'm lifting my hand asking you to pray for me, preacher. Pray for me, preacher. Anybody at all? Anybody at all? I'm looking. I've never received the unspeakable gift of the Son, salvation. And preacher, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. Okay, you can look this way. You can look this way. Everybody look this way. Nobody wants the unspeakable gift. Half the church raised their hands. They had it. Half of them didn't raise their hand. One thing about me is I try to be as transparent as I know to be. What you see is what you get. It's like this. Some of you could not raise your hand. You have it. Which is admitting you don't have it. Which is admitting you don't know Jesus. Which is admitting that you don't have salvation. Which is admitting you don't have the unspeakable gift of security. Which is admitting that if death comes your way, you will not go to heaven. And not raising your hand to want prayer for the unspeakable gift is saying, I'm satisfied with the way I am. I'll take my chances with that place called hell. This is my prayer to you, but I'm still going to pray for you. Friend, friend, life is too short. Too short. It was just yesterday I was sitting in that pickup truck drinking a Mountain Dew talking to one of the best friends I've ever had in this life. And now, over 30-something years later, has gone by. And it seemed like yesterday I was with them. Life's too short. I would not leave. I would not let the sun set on my life without knowing. Why? Listen to me, mom and daddy, family, friend. Them children's supposed to walk in here. Some of them are saved. Some are in their innocence, has no recollection, don't know one way or the other. Mom and daddy, their lives depend on you. You're trying to guilt me. 
you're trying to push me. Oh, if I could guilt you into salvation, I'd guilt you. If I could push you into salvation, I'd push you. I'm just delivering what the Lord said. Life's too short to play with eternity. God loves you so much that he sent some unspeakable gifts. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray. Pray to get them ready for me. I ask you, God, right now, for the hands that was raised that knows without a shadow of a doubt, God, they have received the unspeakable gifts. We'll leave here today rejoicing, rejoicing to be a part of the family of God. But, Lord, we pray for those that did not raise their hand. I ask you, God, before it's eternally too late, maybe before the sun sets, maybe they'll find me on the grounds. Maybe they'll find their own place. They don't have to have a preacher. They ain't got no nobody. Maybe they'll find their place today where they'll look towards heaven. And God, today they would ask you to be their Savior. Forgive them. And they'll receive the unspeakable gifts. Have your way. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a small part in these children's lives. Bless them in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Would y'all stand to your feet as our children make their way in to the sanctuary? Let's give all the children a hand as they're making their way in. Amen. You can be seated. You can be seated. Thank you for standing. While they're finishing up, can we give Miss Kristen, our children administrator, put all vacation Bible school a big hand? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance, allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Christian flag. Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. 
one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. Pledge to the American flag. Attention. Salute. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, you guys can be seated, and Josh is headed up for us. All right, you guys ready to do our song? Yeah. I said, are you ready to do our song? Yeah. Okay. Now, here's the thing. I believe it's only right if we expect our kids to participate that we participate. So let's all stand together, and y'all can do the dances with us. That sound good to y'all? Don't y'all want to see y'all's parents do the dance moves? Yeah. All right. All right, here we go. Go ahead and start me off. Y'all ready? All right, let's start that over. There we go. Welcome to Wonder World. Turn it up now. Welcome to Wonder World. Y'all ready? Here we go. Step right up. Gonna sing it out loud and clear for your moms and dads. Yeah. Right. Ready? Begin. Second Corinthians nine fifteen. Thanks be unto God for His unspeakable gift. Second Corinthians nine fifteen. Did they do a good job on that song and on that verse? Let's give them another hand, man. All right. Now, some of y'all wasn't participating. So let's all stand. We're going to do another song together. Go ahead and start me off back there. For the gift of Jesus Christ, he brings us life. He brings us light. His works are too many, too wonderful for words. Thank God for Jesus, God's gift to the world.
guys want to do one more song? All right, I think we'll do one more song. This one's the best place. This is about VBS and how fun it is. So if y'all participate, we can quit. All right, let's turn it up. Here we go. Turn me up. Turn me way up. Here we go. because they get to throw water balloons at the pastor and he also gets a pie today. We we will keep the children. We will keep the children until after the pie and then they will be lined up against the bushes and then if you parents can line up then we'll check them out that way, okay? All right. Thank you guys. Let's give them a hand again as they We're going to let them get out the building and then uh, we'll have our final prayer. And then we can all dismiss go out. The pizza is already here. Uh, everything on the field is already prepared for you. So uh, we'll have a good time out there. Please eat. Stay. Let the kids play. Remember church family. Church family. After we're done with uh, all of our festivities of Vacation Bible School, we'll do our rest of our cleanup. And then there'll be a brief meeting here in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock. There is no evening service. No evening service tonight. To all of our guests, we want to say thank you for being here with us. Uh, I would stand at the back door and shake your hand. I'm going to go get changed because I know they're all excited to bomb me. Amen. So uh, here's your handshake. Thank you for coming. Thank you for bringing your children. And as soon as they get out the door, then we'll, uh, we'll pray. I will say this. Wacky Wednesday is still going on. What is Wacky Wednesday? It's like vacation Bible school on Wednesday nights. Also, Awana is starting up in a few weeks. Uh, you can get all that information on our website, or you can see Miss Kristen also. And don't forget, first Sunday in September is baptism. If you'd like for your child or yourself to be baptized, let Miss Kristen know about the children and let myself know about the adults. Amen. Let's bow our heads for closing prayer. Father, we love you. And God, we thank you, God, Lord, for what you did today, for this past week, the souls that were saved, everything that's been accomplished because of who you are and what you are. Now I pray, God, you bless the food, bless the fellowship on the field, keep the children, everyone safe. In Jesus' name I pray.